everybody welcome back to another video today's video we need to talk about fourth wing we haven't spoken in a while but i should have a video out already speaking about like what has happened since the last time we spoke but today's video we are going to be talking about fourth wing my experience with fourth wing what I thought about the story, the characters, the plot, the setting, just the whole premise of the book. I have the special edition copy and the regular copy of Fourth Wing. And I had bought these books without even reading the book yet. So that should say a little something about the hype this book has created in the book community. But I just want to get that off the bat. I bought these books without even reading them. Just a disclaimer, this video is not a video of me hating on Fourth Wing. I am just giving my own personal opinions about the book, my experience about the book, and just my general thoughts and feelings about how I felt while reading the book, as per se, if that makes sense. And I decided not to read Fourth Wing right when the book came out. That is because whenever a book is hyped up so much online and everyone's talking about it on BookTok, BookTube, Instagram and such, I it actually puts me off of the book. I don't want to read it at all because everyone has built up these high expectations of what the book is going to to be about or how they feel about the book or their experience reading the book and because people have built up these expectations I now would be going into the book with these expectations of what I book to think is going to be and how I'm going to feel after reading the book. Now in my personal experience going into a book after a book has been hyped up I have been let down and I can name one book off the top of my head but I'm not going to do that just that's not what this video is about but I decided to read Fourth Wing in the beginning of February. It took me three days to read this book. For me, I'm a slow reader and to read a book, this, it's not even big, but it's like a decent size, it's like an average size of like a hardcover book or just even any book. For me to read a book of this size in three days is very impressive for me. I read half of the book in one day one day to be fair i was listening to the audiobook and i was also listening to the dramatized version of the book and i will also speak about what i think about the audiobook as well but i read this book for three days it was a very quick read it kept my attention long enough to keep going with the book which i think is a huge plus for this book considering that this book is centered around dragons it's centered around a college a girl who is not the ideal candidate to become a writer of dragons or to join the writer's quadrant at Vizgaia college it's a good premise of the book and it's i would say a little different compared to other books. When I was reading this book, I started reading it, I already had a general understanding of what the book was about, what I knew I was going to be reading about in a sense. I already knew who Zayden was and I knew how everyone felt. They were comparing him to um, Resand from Akatar, and it kind of threw me off a little bit. I love the Akatar series but it's not the best series I've ever read. It's not, but it's not a bad series either. I haven't finished the series yet. I'm on book three right now. And I definitely really like all of the characters, but it's not like the best story I've ever read. Complete honesty. But it has nothing to do with the characters. When they when people were comparing Zayden in this book to Reese, I was a little hesitant because I feel like I wasn't going to be as invested in the romance or even just the male main character in general so i was a little put off by it. i was a little hesitant to get into the book now 
if you see me looking down every now and then, it's because I'm referring to my reading journal. Typically, every time I finish reading a book, I add it to my reading journal just so I can keep track of the amount of books that I've read for the year so far, how many books I've read per month, um, how many days in a month I have read, how many hours per day I have read. Also, whenever I finish reading a book, I write down my thoughts of the story. So if you see me looking down, it's because of that I'm referring to my notes. Like I said before, I originally bought the original edition of Fourth Wing. I got it from like Target one day. I was just like, oh, like I, I have some credit. Like I will put it towards this book because I know eventually I do want to read this book. But I knew at the time I wasn't going to read it right away. But I knew I wanted to read it sooner rather than later. This book has the map of the continent of Navarre. And when I got the special edition of Fourth Wing, I got it from Barnes & Noble because I wanted the exclusive chapter as well. And when I saw that Fourth Wing had come out, they came out with like the sprayed edges of the dragons on the on the like pages. And I was like, oh, that's really nice, but I don't really need it. Like I, I, I'll be fine with just the plain edges. I ended up regretting that afterward. So I ended up getting the special edition of the book because I also really like the cover and I really like the fact that I like all of the pages were black and this was actually my first ever copy of a book with sprayed edges. I've always wanted one so I wanted to try it with this one but what I noticed when I got the book was there's no map. There is no map whatsoever. So that was a huge letdown and I knew that that was going to be issue be an issue when I started reading the book because especially in a fantasy series I need a map to go with the story because whenever characters in the novel are speaking about places in the world um things that have to do with the plot and the storyline like the politics in the story and they're referring to places in the world I can't map that out in my head I need something visual to go along with it so I can get us an idea of Okay, they're speaking about these two places. How far are they, like, between each other? And they're saying, like, oh, it took us two days to ride from the woods to this, like, city. Okay, now I need to see that on a map because I can't visualize that in my head and I don't know, like, if it's on the north side of the region, the south side, the west, or whatever. So this book did not have a map. But I still wanted to read it from this edition because this book is pretty. It's beautiful. And it also had the exclusive chapters from Barnes & Noble that I wanted to read as well. That is the whole reason why I even bought this book anyway. The look and the extra chapters. When I was done reading this book, I couldn't decide what I wanted to rate the book. I was jumping between a three and a half star and a four stars. I ended up settling on a three and a half stars. I know that is shocking because a lot of people rated this book like four and a half stars to five stars because of the rave and all that like it seemed like for everyone the book lived up to the hype but for me that just wasn't the case the four star feeling from the book it came from the atmosphere of the novel basically the world that it was set in in a, the the politics as well but also from the side characters I didn't get that four star feeling from the main from the main characters. I got that from the side characters. So I got that from Liam, Rhiannon, and Riddick. Liam was such a doll in this book. He was so adorable. The way he protected Violet and he just did whatever Zayden asked of him was amazing. But he was also cool but quiet at the same time. He was funny to some degree and he was just he was such a huge guy and tall for someone who had such a like an adorable personality and then Rhiannon she was just so real she was funny she told everyone what needed to be said she wasn't afraid to speak her mind and then Riddick was just like he was like a child in a man's body <laughs> honestly he was so funny and the people also got like tired of him at one point because of the amount of jokes that he was saying and no one could really like take him seriously so he was a fun character as well so all three of them I loved them to bits to bits and I feel like I also would have rated this four stars as well because whenever I wasn't reading the book I wanted to continue reading the book 
So the book was always on my mind. I kept thinking about the plot and the characters. I wanted to see where the book was going to go. So that was all very promising for the story and just for the book as a whole. But that was the only reason why I wanted to rate it four stars. Literally the only reason. I kept thinking about the book whenever I wasn't reading it. So I was desperate to finish the book. I also wanted to rate it four stars because of the side characters. And I also wanted to rate it four stars because of the atmosphere. Literally, that's it. The reason why I was sitting on the three and a half stars was because of the elements in the story. I feel like the romance in the story was forced sometimes like Violet was so obsessed with Zayden that I just couldn't get behind and I feel like obsessed is like a strong word but every time she looked at him she couldn't take her eyes off him every time she was in the room she couldn't think about anything else besides him so in my head I'm like okay you're focusing so much on this guy when you're having trouble like fighting for yourself in this college and I know that Zayden as a character in this book he, it was like if you're gonna be in the writer's quadrant you need to survive on your own you need to be able to fight your, for yourself you need to prove yourself and you need to earn your dragon and that's not to say that Violet didn't earn her dragon she had a lot of wisdom she brought a lot to the story in terms of like the way the like upper officials think and she knew a lot about the history of Navarre she knew a lot about the history of the world as a as a whole especially since she was supposed to be in the scribe quadrant that's how she prepared to be in the scribe quadrant but wisdom wasn't necessarily going to win you every battle in the writer's quadrant and considering the fact that no matter how many times she trained throughout the story it felt like she was still weak every time it showed like okay three weeks have passed one month has passed and she's been lifting weights so she can become stronger trying to build muscle on her legs so that she could stay on her dragon but every time she went on her dragon she kept falling off i get it it's because you're small then sometimes it was just she wasn't thinking of all an alternative to of ways she can stay on her dragon it seemed like she was only on her dragon for example in flying class it was she wasn't really on her dragon outside of flying class so in my mind i'm thinking okay if you're having so much trouble staying on your dragon for one i would try and take some time aside to fly with your dragon outside of class i don't know if that's against the rules i don't know if i missed that in the story but i would have liked to see a little more like extra effort on her end not saying that she wasn't trying hard in the story but more so she i'm not seeing the progress i'm not seeing the progress at all and then also when she eventually gets her signet i think that's the word she, her ability to control lightning and she's having trouble aiming lightning but then in that big battle at the end of the book she can't aim and it's the point where if, if her lightning bolt and landed in the wrong spot in a spot that she wasn't aiming for and then she ends up killing her ally or killing one of the civilians rather than murdering the the venom and the wyverns i'm sorry i i i i feel like she trained for so long in this book that i just couldn't see the progress and that was my main issue with violet in this story she kept training didn't see the progress in terms of like fighting and flying then she's also too fixated on Zayden. So then eventually, when they kiss in the book, it's just, it's as if they can't get their hands off of each other and now there's rumors about them and then they're feeding into the rumors and now she's saying, I love you to him and you don't know anything about him. I, I, can't, get, I can't get behind characters in a book who fall in love with the other main character in the book and they don't know anything about them. They don't know like their favorite hobby for example it seemed like every time zayden and violet were together after their first kiss it was more so lust rather than like their love for each other yeah of course zayden wanted to keep violet safe because their dragons were mated but it seemed like that was literally the only reason why yeah he made her daggers for her but i felt like i needed more I needed more in the story to be able to root for their romance. 
Now, I know that Iron Flame is out right now. It came out actually in like late November. And I actually have the book. I have the book right here. And yes, I bought it right when it came out. She's thicker for one. And I know that a lot of people were disappointed by this book. A lot of people felt like it was such a letdown after the hype and the way things left off in Fourth Wing. So I'm curious to see that considering my thoughts on Fourth Wing, how I didn't hate the book, definitely did not hate the book, but I definitely didn't love the book. It was like, it was an enjoyable read. And while I'm saying all these, like my cons of the story or things that I couldn't get behind regarding the characters, I don't want to come across as like, I was so frustrated uh, reading this. Like I, I had to put the book down. Like I couldn't deal with them. No, 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 nothing along those lines. In fact, I was just, it intrigued me to continue reading to see if things would get better. You could see, for example, Violet's fighting style getting better, but for example, she still couldn't get a fight without getting injured, without breaking a joint or breaking one of her bones. So I wanted to see a little more progress. So I'm interested to find out if in Fourth Wing, if I will root for their romance a little more. However, I actually heard recently that Zayden becomes the new Tamlin, which is shocking because Zayden is referenced to Resand a lot. And in Akatar, not to spoil anything, but Resand is the better choice in Akatar, and he's a more logical choice. And clearly in Fourth Wing, Zayden wants to make Violet stronger, make her be able to fight for herself so that she doesn't need anyone. She can be there for herself and her dragons. So I don't know how things are going to change in Iron Flame. I'm interested to know what my thoughts on, on this book are going to be. And considering the way the book was left off with her brother being alive, actually, I wasn't expecting that, but I wasn't surprised when they found out that Venom and Wyverns still exist and they are a threat beyond the wards of the college. That was pretty much my thoughts on Fourth Wing. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm probably going to cut out a, a, a bit of what I said. But the main issue that I definitely had with this book to take away from this video was the fact that I did not have a map to go with this book. And when I was actually reading the audiobook for Fourth Wing and it was the dramatized version, they were skipping a lot of lines in the story. So I felt like mm, I'm unsure if I should read the book but just with the regular audiobook because I do love Audible and I do love their audiobooks and I do use them quite a lot when I'm reading considering I am a slow reader. But I'm wondering if I had used the original audiobook to read Fourth Wing if I would have liked this book more. The dramatized version was really good though really good i loved all the sound effects like the punching scenes you could hear them punching each other when violet is using her lightning you could hear the lightning strikes when she's flying with her dragons you could hear the wings flapping in the wind if she's ever in like for example the cafeteria you can hear background noise of other people of other students talking in the background so it's definitely really really good and i definitely recommend it to people However, the only downside that I have to the dramatized version is that they skipped a lot of lines. And it was lines that I would have liked to hear. But for Iron Flame, I would definitely be using the regular audiobook. And I definitely plan on reading it sooner rather than later while the events of Fourth Wing are still fresh in my mind. I'll probably read it sometime in March to be honest. And now that I'm starting to make videos again, I am going to make an effort of starting to do some reading vlogs so that you guys can see my reactions. You guys can hear my thoughts on these books fresh in my mind. And I think that it will be fun for the both of us. So that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. 
we have a nice little selection of our fourth ring series so that is it i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i will see you in the next one bye